What's good? Oh, Cyrus here doing an update on the Trump ruling where he was ordered to pay, I believe the exact figure is $355 million around there in New York over fraud. It is a ridiculous case, and there needs to be a ridiculous case, ridiculous ruling. This is the summary judgment stuff. This is where they're not allowing people to even defend themselves. This is a system that shouldn't even be recognized. Donald Trump should be embarrassed that he went. He has Secret Service protection for life. They might be able to pull some of his, his funds digitally. I don't know. But he doesn't have to, he does not have to go to any of these hearings or cases. Is he should just put and force this directly to the Supreme Court. He should put this in a situation where um, I've got the Secret Service, you've got whatever federal agencies you want to roll up, and we point at each other and figure it out. That's the concept. That's where we should be going. Donald Trump is highlighting some of these cases, the corruption, but to me, he's also giving legitimacy to these court cases. But let's go to middlemaga.com for an update. Update here on the website. I uh, have a blog. Truckers take a stand. That's what I want to talk about. I say that we need peaceful response to these draconian, authoritarian, ridiculous acts. And this is one of them. I don't know exactly what's going to come from it. I don't know exactly who's potentially participating. All of this is anecdotal at this point, but this is what should be discussed. I like to hear this in the news. So right now we're seeing people take a stand. These are truckers. I'm going to play a little clip here from a guy who goes by Chicago Ray. Well, Chicago Ray, uh, let me see uh, where, you, where are you at? Where are you feeling right now on this thing? Hey, folks. Your old pal Chicago Ray checking in. Um, uh, just want to let you know, look, I took down that video that I posted on Friday uh, because it went viral, went on TikTok. Not because I don't stand by what I said, because I do, but, you know, my grandson seen it and, you know, he got a little hurt by it and it hurt my feelings. So, you know, what the fuck? You know. So he's talking about a video. This is the second video. He had a video up on Friday. I thought I put it on the website, but I think I have the, accidentally the same link in here. But he's supporting, saying, hey, I'm supporting Trump, basically. But what I would tell him is, I mean, just for me, I can't tell him what to do. Do what you got to do for your family. For me, I have no, I don't care about your hurt feelings. I'm going to explain to you the gravity of this moment. There ain't no time for hurt feelings. This is where I'm at. I, I follow this stuff, so I know where I'm at. If you follow it and you can convince me otherwise, I'm perfectly fine with that. A lot of people who don't follow this stuff, or I don't know how old his grandson and probably a little kid, but just in general, for people who follow this stuff, if you follow this stuff, and developers, uh, Kevin O'Leary famously, he doesn't get involved in politics because he wants to be neutral. He, those days are over, Kevin, because what this ruling does is it forces you to take a stand. Let me play a little bit more of him. That's it. It is what it is. Um, I, I'm not no, look, I'm not no figurehead here. I'm not no uh, leader of any movement. I'm not going on any podcasts or, you know, doing any GoFundMe's or anything like that. You know, I'm who I am. All right. I hear chatter. I let you guys know what I heard. And, you know, that's what it is. I, I'm, I'm hearing it now. You know, some people are seriously thinking of uh you know not not going to new york city okay base and i appreciate you and whether you know it or not sir he goes by chicago ray it looks like you are a leader and not I, he's not raising money all that but just speaking out you're somewhat of a leader going viral you're somewhat of a leader so this is about a potential boycott in response to this fraud ruling and in my eyes, this ruling isn't something uh, Governor Hochul of New York came out and said, hey, don't worry. And she was right, because what she's saying is, don't worry about this ruling, because if you bend the knee to the regime, you're going to be fine. If you are Nathan Wade to Fanny ass Willis, you're going to be fine. If you are submissive to the military industrial complex, you're going to be fine. You're not going to be ruled at in this manner. This is selective persecution and it is the end of the country. It is the end of our society. There is no coming back from this point. There, once you start doing selective prosecution, trying to put someone in jail, stealing their money, we can't come back together.
it's over. So what we need to do is, how do we proceed? That's why I'm very angry at these influencers. I don't want to say I'm very angry, but I would say more disappointed. And I move on, I'll, I'll do what I do. They don't talk solutions. Patrick Bet David very famously had a great tweet. If you don't know what's happening on this situation, I'm going to look it up here. And I had a reply to it. I was like, man, this is so great. Patrick Bed David, if you don't know, has a podcast. He reminds me of a, you know, Tim Pool, very similar, you know, style, just somebody who demands, I mean, I think commands respect, very, um, very knowledgeable in all areas. And he's great overall. But let me show you what he broke down. So I'm going to be positive with his reply here because he broke it down really well. This is what's happening with Trump, if you don't know. Patrick Bed David posts on X. Let's do some math. President Trump has been ordered to pay $83.3 million and $354 million. Combined, it's $437 million, including interest. It could be another $100 million. His net worth is estimated to be between $2 billion, $2.6 billion. I think that's higher now because of some other um, valuations through Truth Social, I think. But you see the numbers. That's estimated to be between 21% and 27% of his net worth. However, experts have claimed that Trump has somewhere between $600 million and $700 million in cash. Uh, I wonder how much how that compares to Fannie Willis. Trump said that he only has $400 million in cash. This may seem like a lot to the average person, but not when you're being asked to pay $537 million in damages plus interest. This doesn't include the legal fees that have been piling up, as well as the fines his two sons have received. If he chooses to appeal, he would have to secure a bond by putting up about 10% of the total amount owned. That could be $44 million, which he may not get back. In other words, this nonsense decision, an insane dollar amount by the judge, could deplete Trump's saving anywhere from $137 million to $163 million. Love him or hate him, this is what it means. 30 years from now, a woman can come out and falsely claim allegations against you. Number two, I'm paraphrasing now. I'm not reading the whole thing. If you build your wealth through real estate and pay back all your commitments to banks, buyers, and sellers, a judge who hates your politics could make up any number to deplete your life savings and prevent you from doing business. So what does this do to capitalists and those who have aspirations to run in the future? scares the crap out of them scares the crap out of great future candidates he's talking about for politics president that's the whole thing that's what it's designed to do number two eliminate anyone's family from supporting their father or mother from running because you're going to get wrapped up in this too not just family anybody distant family members from those who choose to run avoid being sued notice which of trump's kids got sued and who didn't Make the candidate rethink why they ever chose to run in the first place and ruin the lifestyle of the rich and famous once they th that they once had. Or last but not least, it could energize an entire, entire new generation who love America to realize how much trouble she's in to fight like hell to, and defend the values this nation was built on. This requires a certain level of courage that words can't describe. And that's what Chicago way Ray is showing there. In my opinion, this won't be a fight for everyone. You're going to have to have a few screws missing to get into this fight. But what is freedom worth to you? It's the most important question one has to ask. God is good. Future looks bright. See, I like, he broke it down. Like he's so good at breaking this stuff down. What's the solution though? I need you to get to some tangible solutions discussions. This fight like hell. What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. It's going to take courage. I got you energize a new generation to do what patrick what what do you think needs to be done so that's right now that's what that's where we need to get transition this to and the truckers are doing that potentially they're talking about it at least and that's you have if you're not talking about it, you're not doing anything and i think the, the thing let me end with this i'm going to end with a clip from kerry lake and what in this clip that I'm going to end with from Carrie Lake, I've been playing it. It's so good because she says everybody has their part. I don't have any con control about the supply chain in New York or doing any type of, I don't even want to call it a boycott. If I make a decision just not to service you, I'm not boycotting you. I just don't want to buy your product or service you. If, if I don't have any power in that way, so I can, I do have a mic. I do have a YouTube channel. I can get tens of views, which I value and respect every single one i don't care if the video has 10 views so i can do that that's my part everyone can't do that 
but maybe you're in a state where you have a red governor. I'm in a state with a blue governor who pretends to be a libertarian, which is just hilarious, Colorado. But so I can't really put pressure on them. They're a fully Democrat corporate state that tries to pretend that they're not because Colorado has a lot of libertarians or liberty minded folks. But maybe you're in Louisiana. Maybe you're in Georgia, uh, the fake red state. Maybe you're in Texas. What about Texas, Greg Abbott? How am I supposed to view Greg Abbott? If Greg Abbott is really against the federal government, he would be speaking out loudly against this New York ruling. Why? Because New York has obviously teamed up with the federal government. They're going after Trump. Why? To get to get in good graces and maybe they're working with, maybe they're extension of the feds. So if Greg Abbott was really about that life at the border, and I think that border situation is serious because we're moving men with guns. Is it, people are saying that it was no big deal and that's nonsense. Whenever you're repositioning men who have guns, it's serious. I just don't know what's happening. I just don't know if Greg Abbott is friend or foe. Right now, he I haven't heard him speak out against this. If he was really about that life, he would be speaking out. And you could go, what could you do? You could go to your governor, Greg Abbott, whoever else, and tell them, Ron DeSantis, give these truckers, any trucker that chooses to not service New York, there's nothing illegal about that, if you choose not to service New York, we have a contract for you to make sure you got some money to make up for that. We'll figure something out to, in a way we, we can use your company. That's what needs to happen. And you can see that is a slow process of decentralization. The problem is the decentralization is happening slower than the authority, the, the authority is putting the boot on people's necks. That's kind of the problem. But Kerry Lake says it here, everybody has a role. We're all doing our part. God gave us gifts. God gave us gifts. Even if you go, wait, what's my gift? Your gift might just be getting involved, talking to your neighbors, making sure they're registered to vote. Your gift is, is so huge with your powerful voice and reaching people. I'm using the gifts God gave me, and this is our moment. God put us here for a reason. And I believe that reason is to save this country. That's why we were born at this moment in history. And I'm not going to let that opportunity to save this great nation fall away. I'm going to make sure that I do everything I can. And, and that means getting involved, waking up every day and say, um, God, I'm yours. Put me to work. Yeah. And, and that's what we're doing. So thank you so much. And thank you to Real America's Voice. Middle MAGA.